Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here. My name's Jill. Pronouns are they, them, and I'm residing on Six Nation territory, um, colonially known as Fergus, Ontario, and I'm, uh, I'm back home. <laughs> Last few weeks I've been in Toronto with the big sparkly uh, backdrop, um, but here, um, when it's not pitch black outside, there's a forest there <laughs> and river and uh, my nervous system is slowly arriving and settling down. Mm, so I'm I'm happy to be home and uh, really happy to be with you here. <sighs> so uh, the practice and inspiration for any offering of uh, whatever is is coming tonight is a uh, full cred to a Dharma teacher um, named Rascal. Uh, let me see if I can pronounce it properly. Rubus, Rascal Rubus, R-O-U-B-O-S. And um, I heard their offering their Dharma talk through uh, their guest teacher at uh, True North Insights Queer Sangha, which um, runs at the same time as this pretty much. So um, I used to be able to attend regularly. Now I watch the recordings uh, when I can. And so Rascal is um, defines himself as a white trans mask therapist, Dharma teacher. Um, they they've done the I forget what they call the program dedicated practitioners program through spirit rock and also at ebm's east bay meditation center um and it was the first time i heard them teach and and i'm so grateful because <laughs> it really feels like it's dramatic of course i so but it's authentic to say just really saved me um in this last uh, week, week and a half. Um, and so I've put a link down below this one for their talk um, that's on the YouTube channel. It's called You Don't Have to Sit to Practice. So helpful, especially for folks that are mm, doing a lot of adulting, as they call it. It's <laughs> just like... And uh, it really gives very practical and accessible tools to practice in all different ways in daily life, um, including movement, including including everything, of course, which is how the Dharma is meant to be, to include everything. <clears throat> um, yeah, so highly recommend checking that out. The link is down below and it's here in the chat um, for Zoom. I'll put it in again if you came in after I put it there. Mm, and that, uh, yeah, so this last couple of weeks, I've, mm, <laughs> nervous system has been really activated and, mm, I still feel like it's a little less now, but I still it, the feeling of like constantly putting out fires, like just on high alert and things popping up all the time really quickly and like all day and all night. Um, so that, yeah, so it sneaks up on you. <laughs> it can really, it can really knock you out. And uh, so I've been, and I'm not, well, you'd have to ask other people what they really think, but I'm pretty sure I don't, I'm not usually an anxious person is what I want to say. I'm usually pretty chill and can roll with things pretty well. Um, 
yeah, I live with some folks that experience quite a bit of anxiety. So maybe it's relative, you know, <laughs> relatively speaking, I don't ex usually feel a lot of stress and anxiety. Uh, but I am now. <laughs> and, uh, and then feeling the fatigue that comes with that of that constant woof, <laughs> that constant woof, that's a good way to say it. And then deep fatigue. So we often call it wired, but tired, where you're really just wired. But if you pause for a moment or two, bam, really deep exhaustion or fatigue is underneath the wired. So, um, and then noticing a lot of confusion, like I was late sending the thing today, the link to this because I thought it was Tuesday. Um, projection, fear, all these, all these states have been uh, having their way with me at times. And so this practice from Rascal that um, I still love that name um, shared in Queer Sangha. Uh, was really a lifeline fully. Um, to me, it feels like a fire extinguisher practice. Like what I was saying about all these little fires popping up all the time. It's like, it's just the, uh, mm, yeah, putting, putting them out. And, and so The practice as the way I interpreted it is the way it landed for me um, is really just fully noting as often as possible, beginning, middle, end is <laughs> pretty memorable, accessible. It's not like sit down and pay attention to the breath or, mm, I don't know, do something more like calm. <laughs> When that's not accessible, it's just beginning, middle, end, beginning, middle, end. And because I can just noticing how fast I'm talking, so take a breath. Um, yeah, so when there's a lot of what I'm describing, it's, uh, I found it quite accessible and simple and applicable in daily life, but also in formal practice. So particularly if things are ramped up for you, um, try to apply it as often as you can notice through the day. Mm. Because worrying and hurrying fan the flames right? All these sparks popping off all over the place. And when we're hurrying, that's like the winds sparking them up more, fanning the flames and worrying, projecting into future um, has the same effect. And so when there's a feeling, the sensation or the noticing of the mind states or the body states that are in that flare up. Uh, to note, to feel, to feel the fieriness of it. The 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 image of of fire was used often in the Dharma. Um, and extinguishing the flames is actually a description of Nibbana, extinguishing the flames. So, for instance, in daily life, if, uh, if I was just kind of mindlessly, you know, doing things, attend, doing, doing, um, and the mind is racing into future or wherever it goes, uh, thinking of fire extinguisher or thinking of 
beginning, middle, end. And then just noticing, like say, eating, picking up, chewing, that's the middle, swallowing, end. You know, and and then the more, and then you just keep repeating that and doing that. And then just by doing that simple act, noting it, naming it, beginning, middle, end of whatever the action is, whether it's walking, eating, driving, and anything, just all the everything's anything, uh, it's, it slows you down. And it's embodied, and it's in the present moment. So just naming, beginning, noting it, middle, end. And then as you repeat that, it's as, as the whole system starts to slow down, uh, you can notice smaller parts of that. So it might start kind of uh, large or gross, like, like I'll just use the example of eating. Uh, but then it could be each bite has a beginning, a middle, an end. You know, not just the whole act of eating, but each bite of chewing. Um, of course, each breath. Um, you might start like if you were getting up to move. That's the beginning of the movement, the middle the end, you're getting to wherever you're going. And then it could start to slow down to steps. Beginning, middle, end of a step. Um, there's so many examples. Even driving. To just know you're getting in the car, beginning a journey. Maybe there's a sense of that middle and end of that. But then within it, it could just be, you know, being aware of when turning is happening. Now this stretch is happening. Um, you know, it, it eventually starts to become smaller pieces. And eventually, when slowing down happens more and more, the more you practice this kind of basic noting, uh, can see there's actually no middle. <laughs> Everything, every little small, when it becomes smaller and smaller moments of awareness, is just a rising passing, rising passing, rising passing, just flowing through, flow, everything, all the sensations, thoughts, sounds, don't even have a middle. It's not like there's a thing. <laughs> the more we pay attention and slow down, it's all rising, passing, arising, passing. Yeah. And the more you continue to practice with that, then it's possible that you can even note or be aware of the, either the sensation or the thoughts of anxiety arising or beginning, middle, end. Ah, there's a sensation of however it is for you or whatever you want to name it, or a thought of worrying, planning, projecting or ruminating whichever direction it's going, past or future, to see, oh, we can even know, oh, that's beginning. It, it, it feels like it has a, a length to it or a, a middle, if you want to call it that. And then the ending of it can be known. And that's fantastic. <laughs> that is freeing 
and liberating. And of course, all of this is one of the three characteristics of all things. This is called Anicca, and Anicca, Anatta, and Dukkha are the three characteristics of all things. All things, all the things are impermanent. All things are conditioned, affected, interrelated, interbecoming, inter are. And thus, because everything is in constant flow and beyond our control most of the time, or a lot of it, we can see that it's unreliable. It's not a, something to be clung to as a source of peace and happiness. Um, in the Samyutta Nikaya, I'll put this link down below as well. The Buddha said, the perceiving of impermanence, so being aware of beginning, middle, end, or arising, passing, developed and frequently practiced, removes all sensual passion, removes all passion for material existence, removes all passion for becoming, removes all ignorance, removes and abolishes all conceit of I am. Just as in the autumn, a farmer plowing with a large plow cuts through all the spreading rootlets as they plow. In the same way, the perceiving of impermanence, developed and frequently practiced, removes all passion for becoming, all ignorance, removes and abolishes all conceit of I am. And uh, for many of us, we're, we're not a fan of the idea of removing pa passion. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, this Dharma stuff's good and interesting, but what? <laughs> but what? Now you're going too far. <laughs> We like the passion. And uh, so mm, what this is referring to is clinging, the uh, desire and clinging and uh, clinging to who I am and what I want and um, not seeing clearly the true nature of things um, because these are sources of suffering. I'm just remembering I'll just share it because it, I can't help myself. But uh, I just heard a little rustling sound. It just reminded me one of the reasons why my nervous system is on high alert is because on top of all the everything, there was a mouse running around every freaking night, all scurrying through the bedroom and all through the apartment. I tried so hard to help it find a better life outside but it, it was not having it. So that's, I'm just remembered that that's another uh, <laughs> thing that was activating me. Here's another wee bit. This is from uh, Bhante Hanapola Gunaratana in a fabulous book, Eight Steps to, Eight Mindful Steps to Happiness, Walking the Buddha's Path. Wonderful book, I'll put the link down below. And Bhante says, in reality, who you are is simply this constant flow of changing moments of mind. Since you cannot control this process, you have no choice but to let go. In letting go, you experience joy. And you taste for an instant the freedom and happiness that is the goal of the Buddha's path. Then you know that this mind can be used to gain wisdom. We are simply a constant flow of changing moments of mind. And uh, when things start to feel solidified, how it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you want it to be, that's a clue to stop and notice beginning, middle, and end.
So I hope there's something here that uh, will land for you when you're in a time of uh, needing needing a fire extinguisher practice. <laughs> That's how it landed for me, and I hope it's of service to somebody. Um, and again, big cred to Rascal Ro Rubus for um, reminding us of the of this dharma this truth <clears> hey <throat> okay. i think that's all the bits for tonight so let's practice and uh we'll have a solid 25 minute practice uh tonight without any uh buyers May it be so. Okay. Um, and there will probably be a good deal. I hope there's a good deal of silence in this practice. So I'll um, start with some cues um, for an anchor and how to know we'll practice particularly with a rising passing and a Nietzsche tonight. Um, and uh, some good chunks of silence. Okay. So, uh, seeing what you need to support your body, heart, mind. <clears throat> uh, if you're in a state of um, firefighting as uh, as I've been describing you might like to practice lying down I highly recommend it if you fall asleep that's okay that's what your system needs it's okay So really allowing time to adjust your posture, your lighting, any supports to the body for in relationship to the temperature in your space. Take some time just to do that uh, beginning check-in to see, hmm, am I doing what it sitting in a way I think I should sit or am I finding the posture that really supports what's here for you right now and then that's just begin by kind of taking the temperature on your nervous system is is are there some sparks and flames activation or does your nervous system feel kind of offline or dull or disconnected or perhaps you feel quite regulated how is your energy body And as part of this practice is around embodiment, present moment, slowing down. We can take some time now to establish grounding, relaxing, centering. I like to begin by the 
top of the head. And just guiding awareness piece by piece through the muscles, particularly of the face and head. When awareness meets contraction, does it change or release or soften a little bit? And then take your time. Really, um, we're going to have about 10 minutes of silence here. And I recommend using at least five or 10 minutes here to slowly guide your attention down, across, and through the body. Simply relaxing, softening, and grounding. So let's do that together in silence.
as you have taken this simple arriving, relaxing type of a body scan, sort of a body scan, as you feel a little more presence, you might take a few breaths of noticing here, now, here, now. And now gently allowing the anchor for your practice to arise in this field of presence. If there's a lot of sounds arising and passing in your environment where you are here now, then hearing meditation might be the best anchor. If feeling supported by being with the physicality of embodiment is helpful, then you might choose feeling the sensations of the body or a specific area like hands. And for some, the anchor of feeling breath the sensation, particularly in one place, like the belly, the chest, or the nostrils. So trust your intuitive knowing, your embodied awake awareness, to see what anchor is most supportive for your practice tonight. And then just let that be for the remainder of the practice rather than switching part way or trying something else. Just choosing one. They all have the same characteristics. It's all good. And now if you like to take up this practice of beginning, middle, end, or for myself, I just use a rising passing. So it can be sound, a rising passing. And all the moments of particles of sound that are in a sound. If you're with body, it would be a sensation, a rising and passing. And eventually all the micro movements and micro sensations within a sensation, pulsing, vibrating, tingling, etc. Or breath, arising, passing. And within for instance, one inhale, we can see it has a beginning, a middle, end. Same with the exhale. And within what we call middle is simply a series of micro sensations that are arising, passing, arising, passing. Let's continue to practice together in silence.
If the mind has picked up with thoughts other than attending to the anchor you've chosen, of course, this will happen at times for all of us. When it does, see if you can just note, ah, oh, that had a beginning, carried on for a bit, and is ending. And then you begin again with your anchor. And in these last several minutes of practice, if your nervous system has settled a little bit, if you've been using noting as we've been describing, see if you can let the noting soften or subside or um, just be a, a 1% and let the sensation be 99%. And if thoughts have arisen, rather than paying too much attention to the content of the thoughts, notice the sensation of thinking or attending to thoughts and their passing, ending, and embodiment again.
who you are is simply this constant flow of changing moments of mind. Since you cannot control the process, you have no choice but to let go. In letting go, you experience joy. And you taste for an instant the freedom and happiness that is the goal of the Buddhist path. Then you know that this mind can be used to gain wisdom. And as we close our practice, offering the merits of our wise intention, wise attention, wise bhavana cultivation, and may any benefits, any fruits of this practice help extinguish the fires in our own heart, body, minds so that we may be of skillful service in the world. May the fruits of this practice be for the liberation of all beings everywhere. Thank you for your skillful presence and intention and practice. Um, I'll put the links down below for folks that are practicing with us uh, after on the YouTube channel. Um, please check the links below and uh, I'll also put a link to our upcoming spring weekend meditation retreat which is the first weekend of april at five oaks retreat center so check that out and let me know if you have any questions about it thanks for being with us <laughs>